welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is a bit of a match day vlog I'm going to do from the game between Shelburne Football Club and Wexford FC. Um, top against bottom in the SSC Erchester League First Division. Uh, Shell's obviously looking to extend that lead and push on for automatic promotion. And uh, well, Wexford are kind of sitting rock bottom at the minute. But um, you know, if you're if you're looking at it uh, from a neutral point of view, you'd be thinking that Shells should uh, comfortably win. But from a Shells point of view, you'd be a little bit nervous all the same, just because it's coming to that crunch time of the season. So hopefully, Shells um, get the result tonight. Three or four goals would be nice confidence booster going into the last few games of the season so uh, keep watching here and we'll keep you informed of what goes on. So uh, I'm travelling from Bath here up to Talbot Park so it's a 16th journey for myself um, so yeah it's going to be a long journey so I'll give you a little fast track to uh, the trip here and uh, then we'll continue on there from Talbot Park. <laughs> There. Uh, that journey's pretty ruthless, but uh, here I am, just about at Talker Park, so keep your eyes peeled for this match day experience. <laughs>
So, uh, full time at Talca Park, it is Shelburne 5, Wexford FC 2. Um, three goals in the first half, which ultimately Shells dominated. Kieran Kulduff getting the first with a, a header, uh, whipped, in ball, whipped in ball by uh, McKenna. Um, came back to him, whipped it back in, and there was Kilduff there with the head to head it home, and it was 1 0. And at that point, you were thinking that Shells were going to start cruising, which they did. Um, then uh, Shells obviously get their second then with um, a Ryan Brennan header from a corner and um, again it was just all Shells dominating the game at this point there wasn't really much coming from um, Wexford the only thing McCabe had in goal to deal with really was a, was a shot that was kind of scuffed and um, that was really it in regards to their point of view and then obviously um, Shells got a, a penalty because there was a couple of free kick routines that they were trying but they were not coming off and uh, you know I, I suppose they got a lot of luck for the for the third goal <laughs> whatever way uh, Ryan Brennan ran in to step over the free kick uh, he went to go uh, he looked like he kind of tripped up over himself but the ref gave a penalty anyway and Kieran Kilduff dispatched it there so it was 3-0 going into half time and uh, ultimately people thought Shelburne were going to come out and dominate for the second half but that wasn't the case um, Wexford came out early doors and, and got two quick goals uh, I think it was Furlong I think got the two goals I was standing from the, from the chipper end so I didn't get a good view but I just seen two headers being knocked in uh, from close range it looked like the keeper made a save and he was just there to kind of head home the rebound and that was really it um, at that point then um, Ian Morris decided to make a change and bring on Denzel Fernandez. but I have to say before that uh, in the first half that Shane Farrell, Kieran Kilduff, um, and uh, the new lad Kabia, I think that's how you say his name, could be Kabia, um, were, were uh, terrorising him, especially him on the right. He looks like a really, really good new signing. And um, yeah, it, it, it's looking good for him. And then obviously the other new lad, uh, Fernandez, comes on and literally Shane Farrell hits it to him outside the boot. He skins the full back, gets it into the box, and he whips in across, or it's kind of like a cutback. And Kilduff missed it, but Cabia was there to, to fire at home, and then it was 4 2. And ultimately, then kind of shells just kind of kept Wexford to limited you know, uh, attacks and stuff like that. So there wasn't much of no from a Wexford point of view. I think once the fourth goal went in, that kind of killed them off. Any sort of a revival was over at that point. Then, obviously, in the last few minutes, then um, shells got their fifth goal. Now, from where I was uh, watching, it looked like it was Oscar Brennan scored a header. People are saying it was Cabia. Um, they do not look at anything alike, I can assure you of that. So uh, if I am wrong in that regards, I'm sorry, but from where I was, it looked like Oscar Brennan headed home. Uh, anyway, it was it was great. Chance, the fans never stopped chanting. Uh, I was in with the fans for the whole game, bar when they got the two goals. So I'll know next time to just stay in with the fans rather than uh, standing by the chipper waiting on a couple of lads I was waiting with. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's... Uh, look, if, if Shells want to go up and, and be serious about it, we need to make sure that, you know, we're killing off games early doors. You know, if we're winning 3-0, can't afford to let them come back in and get two goals, especially like that. We're kind of on the ropes for a couple of minutes. Not long now, Ian Morris identified the danger, which is a sign of a really good manager. Um, but at the same point, these are bottom of the league, so we should really, you know, be killing them off early, early enough and, you know, we should have the confidence now to, to do that. But look, um, obviously Drogheda uh, and Cavantili have drawn tonight. So look, I suppose results couldn't have went any better for Shells tonight and look forward to the, to the next game. So uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. This is my um, match day experience vlog. Um, that's it for me. Don't forget to like, uh, subscribe and if you wouldn't mind sharing the YouTube channel at this point, we are nearly on 6,000 subscribers. I think we're only 30 something away. So if you like the video uh, and you like our videos and you're returning um, watcher, then don't forget to subscribe. All right, thanks for watching and speak to you soon.